Are you an enthusiast or are you a collector? Hey y'all, it's me Lauren, AKA Lo So Natural. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you are not a current subscriber, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I promise you won't regret it. Today I have a new series where I'm gonna be talking about curation, fragrance curation, curating my fragrance wardrobe. Y'all know I'm not even calling my scent stash a collection because i'm not a collector i am a person that is a fragrance enthusiast and i want to create my fragrance wardrobe just like you put on clothes i want to put on my fragrance i want to be able to reach for every scent in my collection at some point in time for some occasion on a regular to semi-regular basis and so for that reason i want to start a curation series anyone that's like me that is a little tired of overconsumption I know that has been a buzzword a hot topic thing as of lately for different content creators different fragrance reviewers across all niches honestly overconsumption has been a thing but that is not my only purpose for curation it's not that I just want to stop overconsumption. I just want to think about fragrance in a more meaningful, more useful way. I want my fragrance wardrobe to be functional and I want to have a functional process that works for me. I am Loso Natural, your fragrance curator. So I have a couple ideas that I jotted down in my iPad and I want to talk freely, honestly, and frankly about some of these topic and i feel like you can be a curator and a collector of course but for me a collector is you have fragrances not only to wear but to collect like having a museum whether it's for you whether it's for other people you have a great collection that you maybe want to see expand you seize the opportunity when it presents itself to add more fragrances to your collection. I can't speak for all collectors. I'm not a collector. Everybody's purpose for collecting is different. But for me, an enthusiast is someone that doesn't necessarily want to get everything. I don't seek to have a fragrance from every single fragrance house. As an enthusiast, I like what I like. I add to my wardrobe when it feels right. Sometimes just when I want to. And that's why I want to figure out a process as a enthusiast because I am self-aware that I'm not a collector and I'm self-aware that I know I don't need everything. How can I put that into practice? How can I incorporate me knowing this about myself into practical steps? And I'm not saying it's bad to be a fragrance collector. Some people collect lapel pins. Some people collect baseball cards. I just know that I am not a collector. So my goal of fragrance curation in general is to create a functional wardrobe that fits my vibe as well as fits my life. My vibe, I like to smell sweet, fresh, bold, and unique. In my life, I am living a more laid back, a more relaxed life currently. I like to pop out but I'm only doing that on occasion as of right now. I would like to do it a little more, but you know, in due season. Another goal is I want to create practices or techniques to implement into my fragrance purchasing. When it's time to buy a fragrance, I don't just want to impulsively, sporadically just buy something. I want to know that I have gone through my process and I feel like this is a worthwhile this is a purchase that makes sense so on my journey of curation things that i realized about myself and that y'all might want to know is the notes and accords that are my favorite that i feel like i gravitate towards more often so i wrote down some of my favorite notes 
Some of my favorites are vanilla, musk, peony, powder, powdery notes, peach, rose, violet, amber, jasmine, marshmallow, cotton, orange blossom, and bergamot. That is not an exhausted list or an exhaustive list, but it's just some notes that automatically came to me that I'm like, yeah, no, I know for sure that that's a favorite or I know it's in some of my favorite perfumes numerous times. It's a reoccurring note that I see a lot. My favorite accords would be sweet, fruity, vanilla, fresh, floral, citrus, like tonic and tropical. I would say probably also musk. Musky is probably another accord that I didn't have written down. The type of fragrances that I know, I know, I know, I know for a fact I love are Flormons, Fruity Florals, Fruity Fresh Scents. I like Sweet Fresh Scents and I like Fresh Spicy Scents. Again, I'm not giving y'all a complete list but these are the things that came to the forefront of my mind. I know I like these scents and I will keep them in my remembrance. I will keep them in my back pocket for when it's time to purchase a fragrance because I know that I know without a doubt that this is a fragrance I probably will reach for and it's from a category that I know I love. Now, something that just came to my mind is I'm not saying I'm only going to want to purchase these type of fragrances or have these type of notes because that can make a wardrobe, a collection redundant. Like I don't want all of my perfumes to only have these notes. But when I'm looking for a fragrance, especially if I even think about blind buying something, I need to make sure I cover my bases but I think I'm going to be limiting my blind buying just a little bit. And truthfully, I already have. I also came up with some questions I'm gonna ask myself. And I think there are questions that maybe if you are interested in curating your fragrance wardrobe or you're trying to downsize or be more mindful, there are questions that you could ask yourself as well. The first question is, are you getting fragrances you truly love for yourself or what you think others will love or both? I would ask that question because I have learned that while I like getting compliments, I find that I prefer to wear fragrances that I love. If it's a compliment getter, it's nice. But am I wearing a fragrance because I want to get compliments or because I truly love it? And I find that I just wanna wear fragrances that I truly love, that uplift me, that are meaningful to me, that are associated with great memories or whatever. I am now in a phase where I would rather wear a fragrance for me and not someone else. Now, of course, there are situations when you might wanna wear somebody else's favorite fragrance or whatnot, but I'm in my me era, not being selfish, but being mindful of why I'm purchasing a fragrance. If you don't love the fragrance you're wearing or purchasing, why does it really matter what somebody else thinks? Like, yes, you don't wanna be offensive to somebody else, but are you living your life for that other person as well? Question mark. Let me also interject and say, I know some people have allergies and you have to buy fragrances that are inoffensive to people that you are around a lot. I get it, I get it, I get it. I'm just saying in general, if you are truly a fragrance enthusiast, you can't just have a collection of fragrances that other people enjoy. The next question is, are your fragrance purchases practical for your current life or the fictitious life in your head? I came up with this question a while back because that kind of goes into me curating my fragrance wardrobe for my life and my vibe. So my life portion is, I am currently a stay at home mom. Now my daughter is getting older, so I feel like we're coming to the end of that phase, but I'm in the house a lot. I don't go out at night, hardly ever. Like it has to be a very special occasion. For me in my life right now, 
if I have all of these mysterious, dark, let's say those seductive fragrances you will wear out on a town or whatever. If I'm home in my skims or my sweats or whatever, I'm reaching for easy reach, clean, freshies. It's hot outside. My life right now is it's hot, but seasons change. So I'm not really factoring in seasons as much when I am talking about this question but just in general like what does your life look like right now if every time you buy a fragrance you're like oh this is going to be for when I hit the town this is going to be when I go out to dinner this is going to be when I go out to brunch but you ain't been a brunch in two years like why are you buying these brunch scents for these fictitious events these fictitious activities that you'll never do these are questions I've had to ask myself. I'm not asking y'all, I'm asking myself, like, why do you need all these going out scents and you don't go out? Like, of course I want to go out. That's not the issue. It's the fact that I'm not going out. But of course, life does change. We evolve, you know, just because your life is like this today doesn't mean it's gonna be like that tomorrow. But this is just a general question. Are you buying fragrances for your real life or your fictitious life? And it's okay to desire a life. It's okay to buy for the future, but we living in the right now. Like you live in Arizona and you're like, oh, I'm gonna buy these winter fragrances for when I'm skiing in the Alps. When I have a nice cold night, but knowing the coldest night you're gonna have is 60 degrees, 70 degrees, and you buying it like you, you know, you in Switzerland. Just make it make sense. Make it make sense for you, not for anybody else. Just because that fragrant creator has all four seasons and they have their summer scents, their winter scents, you know, their spring scents and their fall scents. And yes, I know that was not in order. They have scents for all seasons, but you living in a place that only has one season. You don't need all four, cause you only have one. Okay, okay, you might have two seasons, but that second season you only have for two weeks. My next question is, are your fragrances easy reaches or do you force yourself to pick up some? That's a question I've had to ask myself a couple times. There have been some fragrances that I've been trying to finish or have finished and I was forcing myself to wear them. Now, there is circumstances where you buy a fragrance, you love it, and then you end up hating it. I get it, it has happened to me. But this kind of factors into the previous question where it's like you have all of these fragrances that don't make sense for your life. So you're forcing yourself to wear these fragrances when it doesn't fit the vibe. You know what I'm saying? They're not an easy reach because they're just not an easy reach for you because they aren't as practical for your fragrance wardrobe like you thought they were. So I feel like this is a great question to ask. Is this fragrance going to be an easy reach for me? That's the question you ask before, but you can also ask that question about your current fragrance wardrobe. Is what I have? Are they easy reaches or are they not? Another question that I feel like is very important is how does your fragrance wardrobe slash collection make you feel? When you look at it, does it make you feel discontentment? Does it make you feel overwhelmed? Does it make you feel satisfied? Does it make you feel in love? Does it make you feel excited? Does it make you feel inspired? Does it make you feel whatever? Does it make you feel like you shouldn't have spent your money? Like how does your fragrance wardrobe or collection make you feel? That's a question to ask currently and moving forward. The next question is, is your fragrance collection or wardrobe serving you? And if you answer yes, a follow-up question is, if it is, why do you want everything that is being released? This is not a question of condemnation. It's just a question. 
Is it serving you? Now, can your fragrance wardrobe and collection be serving you and you still want something else? I highly believe it. But I feel like that's just a great question to ask. If you feel like what you have is serving you, that every purchase you have made was the best purchase or was a worthwhile purchase, if you feel like it was a perfect purchase, why do you still want everything? And the answer could be, we are all fragrance enthusiasts. That could be the answer. That's why I want more because I just love, you know, I just love it. But it's like, when, when do you stop? When does it come to a point where you're like, this is the perfect collection. This is the perfect wardrobe. And there may never be a time, but for some of us, there may be a cutoff where you're like, oh, I want to, you know, use up one or two or 10 or 15 or 30 or 50 perfumes before I want to accumulate more or, you know, change my fragrance wardrobe, depending on how many fragrances we have in our collections or wardrobes. So is your fragrance collection or wardrobe serving you? My last question is, are you an enthusiast or are you a collector? Some of us might not care to put ourselves in a box to label ourselves as either, and that's fine. But that's a question that I will be asking myself. Do I feel like I'm a collector at this current point? No, I am a fragrance enthusiast. And because I know that about me, I'm governing myself accordingly based on that answer. Now, that wraps up my first episode or segment in my curation journey. If you are interested in this content, if you are excited about it, please make sure you give me a thumbs up or drop a comment down below. If you want to keep watching, if you want to stay in the loop, make sure you're a subscriber and you hit that notification bell so you're notified every time I drop a video. And share this video with a fellow fragrance enthusiast or collector because it might engage some thought. For me, it's just food for thought and I feel like it could be the same for somebody else. I'm excited for this journey, not only for me, but for y'all as well, because we're going on this journey together. Thank y'all so much for watching. I love you guys. Bye.